wife. I just realized this thing has two different front tires. Which is, there's a lot of things we're noticing now since we've had it for a while. This BM1, I just didn't even notice. I, they're Pirelli tires. Both of them are Pirelli tires. These are P0s. Yeah. P0s. The other side are Pirelli Scorpions. Different tread. Whatever. I guess you don't really notice that. Anyways, we're due for an oil change on this thing. And it takes... Oh my god. There's a amount of... Like I said, it isn't all bugs. This There's a front bar across the inside of there. That's painted black. And the paint's all chipped up. Boy, this thing, this thing needs a serious cleaning. And I'm going to do that next weekend because I'm taking this to a car show at work. But I've never seen the underside of this thing, and it's hard to even see the underside of it because the whole underside of the engine is covered in trays. So here in the back, we'll notice a subframe design. This is uh, kind of, you know, same sort of setup like the Z uses, you know, the differential, the bushing here, two bushings in the front. That's how the Z set up, but I mean, not as expensive as this. <laughs> How do you get the insides of these wheels curbed? I don't know. And the dirt. Why is there so much brake dust on this side? And this one's not near as bad over here. I don't know. Exhaust is pretty nice. It is valved exhaust, as you can see. Uh, that makes it louder or quieter, depending on what mode you're in. Bunch of resonators. Here's your transmission. This is the... 10 speed auto. Got a corrosion on that. I'm not really a fan of that. But eh, I guess it's, it's flaking off pretty easy. Alright. Anyways, she's not gonna drive this thing in the winter. We're not driving it in the winter. That's what the Murano is for. Looking up in there, everything looks dry. Good. That's what I, that's the way we like it. Dry. I mean not you know what I mean. It's actually looking like the oil pan for the engine is right here. And one of these is going to be the drain for it. And I'm trying to look up in it. Can you guys see it? Is it this one? Or is it? Who cares? Let's just pull both of those off. And then there's a little tray right here too. Let's pull all three of these off so I can see in there a little bit better. Now I'm hoping... This isn't a dry sump engine, because I don't honestly know. It's surprising. So this, this tray is steel. The other ones are aluminum. Alright, so that gives me accessory to the belt. Power steering. I think it's part, wait a minute, is that the, is that the oil filter? That's the oil filter. Okay. Never seen one like that. So apparently, this is the oil filter housing. That's what it's looking like. Sure is. There's the drain. Oil. What's this say? This says oil. That says oil GR. What does that mean? I don't know what that means because I don't see anything up in there. All right. I'd like to super clean this engine. It need, not like super clean, but I mean, yeah, super clean. They look like almost like a sheet metal screw, like a self-tapper, and they go into a plastic insert. That's enough. That's enough. It'll hold it. So anyways, start draining this thing. I don't have a filter wrench to fit that, but I do have other tools.
Okay, so now since this thing takes so much oil, 9.1 quarts, my truck takes 8. Okay, this all aluminum block, it takes a lot of oil. But since it takes a lot of oil, the oil change intervals on this thing are suggested every 6,000 to 10,000 miles. I can tell you right now, we'll never do 10,000 miles on an oil change. I don't know when they changed it. That's the only reason I'm changing it right now. Uh, since we got it, I just, for peace of mind, it's an expensive car. I want to keep it nice, so uh, that's why I'm doing this now. The oil wasn't that bad. It's not that bad looking. It takes uh, 5W30. I actually said online you can use 0W30. I, I prefer to use a little bit thicker oil. I don't care about gas mileage, especially when it comes to something like this. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to clean this up a good bit. Look at the corrosion on the end of it, too. Everything's aluminum. The uh, aluminum block, all the accessories, everything's aluminum. So, I'm going to clean this up anyways, uh, make it look a little bit better. And uh, it's th the oil is still draining out of the engine. So, I'm going to let it keep going because I want to get all the old oil out. And the filter says made in China. I want to compare it to the one I got. I got a, I didn't get a Lexus filter, but I got a, I think a mobile one. Let me go look. All right, so actually I got full synthetic Valvoline 530 Advanced, and then I got a Bosch filter. Let me see what it looks like compared to the one that came out of it. This one doesn't have that, does it? Oh, it comes out. Okay. But for whatever reason, it has that on it. You can take it out. Um, these always do come with an O-ring for that housing, too. Replace it. There's another O-ring in here, and that's probably for something else. Cleaned up the best I could. Looks a little better. The corrosion's gone. You know what took the corrosion off? Neverdoll. Neverdoll ate it right off there. I wiped it with that steel wool, or not, not steel wool, with that wool cloth. Neverdoll, and it, it came right off. We're going to lube this a little bit, a little bit of oil, and then uh, slap it in there. This filter says made in China as well. Slap her back in. Now the oil is slowed to a drip. We're going to go ahead and throw that plug back in. So I should add, underneath the car there are four aluminum lift points they have aluminum brackets bolted to the body that's where you're going to want to lift this thing up whenever you put it on a lift or if you're jacking on it on one side yeah you're going to want to use those lift blocks that are on the sides not the pinch joint because you can't get to it because the side skirt covers the pinch weld let's take this cover off look at that doesn't that look beautiful no it doesn't that's why they put this cover on because it's not a very good looking engine. I can tell you that right now. What's this intake tube here? It's got like a resonator. Does that connect to the intake? It goes into the car. I bet you that is to resonate sound into the car. I guarantee you that that's from the intake. And it goes into the firewall. Never seen that before. So you get in more induction noise inside the car. Sweet. <laughs> I don't honestly know that. I'm, I'm talking out of my butt. I, it might be, but I don't know. Now you're going to fill this engine right here. You're going to check it way over here. You got your antifreeze overflow bottle right here. It's full. We're good there. These are air intakes that go around. Looks like it goes into the air boxes right here. These two Does that come in through the hood. Yeah. Oh, there's vents right here that bring air up, that scoops them in. All right, that's nifty.
Anyways, that's all I got for you today. So if you like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom wants to see me work on the cruise. It's funny she mentioned that. I'm going to bring it in right now. We're going to keep going. Ha! Now this car needs a serious clean, and uh, that's my next weekend project is to fully clean this thing. And then I got new armor shield. I got the armor shield max. It's supposed to last like, I think, three to five years. Well, yeah, we're gonna put that on this. I'm gonna do everything. The whole car, windows, mirrors, wheels. I'm gonna do it all. We're gonna get this thing coated. It needs protected, especially with my wife driving it. <laughs> So what we're doing today, since this isn't a high dollar ride, we're going to attempt to patch the exhaust leak. Yeah, I know. Hey, you guys are cringing right now. We're going to attempt to fix it. I got two different things here for patching an exhaust. And I got to change the oil. So let's go ahead and change the oil real quick, get that out of the way. Then I think I'm, I'm either going to cut the bolts off of the flange, the flange underneath in the middle of the car. Is extremely rusty it's leaking on the top I'm thinking cut the bolts off put new bolts in so we can pull it pretty tight but then I also got muffler tailpipe putty this stuff gets hard as a rock once you put it on there so put that smear it out the whole way around the flange when we put it back together and then I also got quick patch tape to put around the flange That'll keep it from rusting if I get it all sealed in pretty good. Um, so yeah, this is a work ride for somebody. I don't, I, what I wanted to get, they make these flanges that go around the pipe behind the old flange and then you put bolts through it that way and it pulls it together. I wanted to do that, they didn't have it. So I got what I got, which is like $20 worth of junk. but. Yeah, we're going to fix it today. I'll tell you what, this thing runs 10 times better since I fixed that exhaust leak up on the manifold. Way better. Way better. There is a leak. Is that a leak? Water on the heat shield up front. I think it's water. Yeah, that's water. I'm going to take this heat shield off real quick and make sure it ain't got a new leak. Let me get a camera in here. I don't know what's going on. Just know it's wet right there and I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not bad, but it ran down over the front of the heat shield. And that's what I don't like. Like it looked like a drop. Pretty sure Chevy made this thing uh, with full intentions for it to not keep all the fluids in. I, I don't know. It's, it's just like this thing cannot keep them in. It's coolant. There's a red drop right there at the bottom. So we're still leaking. I'm telling you. As you can see, this is coolant. You look right. Let me get a focus on this. Right there on the cooler itself. Uh, I can see a drop of coolant and it looks fresh. Put it back down so I can look at it because I can't tell if it's coming from underneath the cooler or if there's a line near the top it's coming from. It's, everything on these leak is coolant. Everything. Get your butt over here. I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I narrowed this down to what is leaking. Right there. You can see it plain as can be right there, leaking off of the cooler. But you gotta you go up, okay? Because it's gonna run down over things. So I kept going, get up above that. And then I found this line which is on top. Let me right there. You can see it is wet right there at that bolt. 
Well, then I curved this up again, and I seen a drop on that hood, on that metal fitting right there. There's a drop of coolant. And then you see this line right here. Right there. You see that? That's way up top. That is the turbo feed, coolant feed. It's bad. It's not horrible, but it's bad. Now, there's two hoses on this thing that they've been kind of like compromised from oil and stuff. But let me get you down in here so you can see this a little better. This line right here, which connects right here and then loops around right here, goes underneath the exhaust. I don't think it's bolted to anything. Nope. Right here to the top of the turbo where that coolant goes in there. This line is extremely rubbery. Extremely rubbery. And you see this, this crimp right here, it's moving. That's cause uh, it's bad. That should be, that should be tight on there. I shouldn't be able to spin that. I can spin that line on that, on that fitting. So that's not a bad fix, but again, gotta drain the coolant so you don't spill it everywhere and you know, at least it's on top of the engine. That's not a bad job to do. I'm okay with that. I'll see if I can order it. Probably cheap, but yeah. One good thing is I do have this thing sold, but I can't sell it right now because I don't have the title back. So that gives me a little bit of time to fix a couple little things here and there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get it fixed up. That's, And that would also, where that's at, can leak right onto the exhaust as well. So that's totally wrong. Come over here. So what I thought I was looking at was this line feeding over to here. Totally wrong. This is this line right here. It goes into there. This one clamped on right there. Right there. And then it goes back. And then you can see back there in the back. Let me see that fitting there that you can't get to unless you remove the turbo. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is the line that needs to come off. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to remove this line off of this, get a piece of uh, coolant hose, put this sleeve over it. We're going to put a hose clamp here. We're going to put a hose clamp on that and be done with it. This isn't going to get done today, but... In the future. That, that's how I'm going to fix it. I'm just putting it that way. When they replaced this turbo a while back, I'm going to guess that they did not replace the lines. And normally when you replace a turbo, you go ahead and replace all the lines. Anyways, already loosened the housing. Let's get underneath, drop the oil, put fresh in anyway, so we're at least not leaking that. <laughs> we'll go from there. So right here's our exhaust leak. There's no way these are studs. No way getting them bolts off. I think I'm just gonna leave them. They're still holding. I need to get a wire brush across the top and clean as much of it as possible. It's not leaking across the bottom, it's leaking across the top. And it's tight, okay? So I'm gonna have to go around it. it might be leaking right here too. Cover the top with that putty. And we're also going to do the tape, so let's let's see how this goes. Oh, 
The pace might be good. That tape was junk. And I read on there you're supposed to get the exhaust real hot before you do that. Wrap it. Like I want to mess around on a hot exhaust with some freaking tape just to, to wrap it around there. To Yeah. Mm -hmm. The putty is a, is a better idea if you can get to stay in place. Uh, I'm leaving it on there. Once I, I heated the tape, then it started sticking to it, but... Yeah, I got this putty all over me. Let's put this thing down, put some oil in it. Well, put a new filter in, then put some oil in it. Yeah. Castro! Because it was the cheapest I could get on Amazon at the time. Anyways, here we got a, a Fram filter even. I didn't think I ordered Fram. But that's what I got. So that's what's going in it. It's a drop-in. Paper. Filter. See, they had the oil leaked also. My, my package didn't leak a lot, but it, it leaked once it got to my house. Like, the, the bottle's a little oily. But it's still showing I have five quarts in there, so I've barely lost any. I've never done an oil filter on one of these, but I can only assume that it's going to be messy, seeing as how it's right here, and I have to bring it up over the transmission. Let me get a, let me get a rag to put underneath it. Why did the filter stay? The filter's supposed to come out with it. Yeah, didn't really make a mess at all. I don't even think I dropped any at, at all. It's a little smashed, whatever. Now you're supposed to clip this in the lid and then put it, I think I'm just gonna put it in there. It has a, a spout that it sits on. There, it's clipped in. I'd rather it be in place down there in the bottom than to be in place on the lid and then not clip in there right. That's where I'm at. Okay. Change this O-ring out. Looks like it hasn't been changed in a while. It's completely flat. Yep. Flat. This thing is being so much of a bitch, I'm putting it in dry. <laughs> it deserves it. A little over four quarts, or maybe four and a half quarts. Like, the valve cover is right on top of the cams. Like, that that does nothing. Pretty quiet, I think. We got the exhaust leak plugged for now. Anyways, I'll let it run for 10 minutes and then shut it down and then leave it here overnight. Maybe we'll continue on this video. I was gonna stop this video, but I think I can fix that. So on that note, I guess I'll see you another day because I gotta get hose to do that. I need hooves. I would say, I didn't remember all this rattling and stuff, but look. It's this engine cover. I'm gonna probably put some like double sided tape on it or something. I'll figure something out. Man, the back clips are broken. I'm gonna put some foam on this, some insulated foam or something. Make it quieter added a piece of foam across right here now these back clips are still broken but it keeps that from vibrating it makes it sound a lot better doesn't sound like the engine's falling apart now it's gonna look awkward on this thing but I got these these were uh, a bunch of hoses for that WRX and it didn't wasn't even for my WRX so there is a bunch of molded lines in here and these are really strong molded lines and I need to make a tight curve so I'm looking 
to find one that's the right size. It has a tight curve in it. This is going to be our line right here. It's going to look weird on them, but I'm going to cover it with that stuff, that heat wrap. But I think, I think it'll do the job. All right, this thing had a full day to cool off. Let me get some empty jugs, because I'm not, I repeat, I am not putting new coolant in this thing, because it has new coolant in it. This one and this one. Okay. Now, I'm going to put a hose on this thing this time. There's a drain pet cock right here somewhere. I'm going to drop this thing. Okay, i got to drop this again. Let me get that off there. I'll show it to you. All right, right here is your pet cock, and right there is where it comes out of. A lot of these models, when you do that, it comes out of the bottom of this peg. But on this one, it's got a little nipple right there. I'm going to put a hose on that and drain it into containers to reuse. You're gonna have to excuse me while I clean up my mess here. I want the floor to be clean whenever I run this thing, but it has cooling in it now. I have a new line on there. Should be fixed. I'll show you the old one. Yeah, I got brake clean in my eye, so my, I'm not crying. I swear to God. Um, right there, I pulled that crimp right off. There's no way you should be able to pull that off. So this was leaking on the crimped end down there and it was a free fix because i had the hoses and i had the hose clamps so any free fix i can get i'm gonna take now is this fix gonna fail instantly or is it gonna pass the test let's find out burn some stuff off. I'm going to let this thing continue to run. I've got it pretty dry in there. Thank God. Great clean everything. Um, there's a little bit sitting in the oil filter housing because it's got some pockets in it or whatever. really nothing I can do about that. But we're going to just keep our eyes on things. I'm going to put it up in the air and I'm going to look underneath it too to make sure nothing's leaking. But as of right now, no leaks. All right, we've been running her for quite a while now. Went around, tightened some oil pan bolts because it looked oily. You know, I've cleaned it off, but it just looked like there was some fresh oil there. Went around and honestly probably got like six of them a half a turn or more tighter. Maybe one, maybe a full turn. And then the oil drain on the turbo, the front bolt was tight. The one that's hard to get to, you need a swivel socket and a couple extensions you can get to it. I got about three quarters of a turn on that one. Yeah. It shouldn't it shouldn't leak very bad if it does now. It, it's just rust proofing at this point. On another note, I'm pretty sure we've heat cycled at this point. Nothing's leaking that I can see. I'm gonna put it back down now and check it over. Still dry. Still dry. Yeah, now I put the AC on. Now we're gonna let that run. It should heat cycle at this point. I wanted to open the thermostat so there's pressure in the system because 
that's the only way you're really going to tell if there's a leak when it's fully pressurized. As of right now, I could squeeze this radiator hose up top. That means it's not open yet. So there's not pressure in the system yet. All right, so it wasn't very long after I shut the camera off. Now there's pressure in the system. This hose is getting tight. I can still squeeze it, but that means the thermostat's opening up. So that means everything's starting to pressurize now. So I'm gonna let it go a little bit longer and then we're gonna shut it down. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, so some fully pressurized, no leaks this time that I can see yet. I'm not gonna jinx myself like that. But anyways, that's gonna be the end of this video. So if you guys like this video, smash that like button, consider subscribing. That dislike button if your mom gets a drip every time I'm around. And we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrecked. snacks yeah I know you just want to have some of his too oh you you gonna guard him Stella did you like your treats yeah Sheldon what are you doing mommy finally freed you what do you have to say for yourself I don't have food. Soli, you're allowed to come out. You're allowed, you're allowed to come out of there. There you go. There you go. Big stretch. What are you doing? <laughs> what was that? You just got skibbity bapped. Yeah. Yeah, now you know what we mean when we say you're a little little biatch, huh? Huh? I seen that skibbity bap, huh? What was that about? Your brother did nothing.